Hi everyone, welcome to week two of our AAPC CIC curriculum. Today we're going to be doing a high level overview of medical terminology and anatomy. A thorough knowledge of a human anatomy is essential to successful coding, as is the ability to understand medical terminology used to describe and document medical procedures and services. This chapter will introduce the basic elements of human anatomy and review medical vocabulary and terminology. ICD-10 PCS codes are reported for procedures by inpatient facilities, and ICD-10 CM codes are reported for diagnoses. ICD-10 and ICD-10 PCS were implemented on October 1st, 2015. Code selection using all code sets will be discussed in later chapters. In this chapter, we're going to review word elements, such as combining forms, prefixes, and suffixes, looking at some diagnostic and procedural terms and interpret their meaning, and understand anatomy as it relates to coding. This is a review of anatomy and medical terms you should already know. This is not meant to replace a comprehensive course in medical terminology or anatomy, and I highly recommend that if you haven't already had that course, that you would take a complete course in that as well. So every profession has its own language and medicine is no exception. Medical terminology is an ancient language that has been in use for many years. For example, we often see PRN in medical documentation. PRN stands for the Latin phrase pro renata, which means when necessary. To code medical procedures and diagnoses accurately, you must first know the language of medicine. The base of a word is considered the root. These are terms that are the main portion of a medical term. A root word often defines the body area or system being discussed, such as derm for skin or splen for spleen. It is possible for a word to have multiple roots, which is referred to as a compound word. An example of a compound word is cardiovascular. Cardio means heart, vascular means vessel. Cardiovascular is pertaining to the heart and blood vessels. Another example is nephrolithiasis. Nephro is the kidney and lith is a calculus or stone. Nephrolithiasis is a disorder characterized characterized by stones in the kidney. A prefix is attached at the beginning of a word. It typically indicates location, time, or number, although a prefix can also give other definitions to a word, such as color. An example of a pre prefix indicating a number is tri, meaning three. The tricuspid valve has three points or cusps. An example of a prefix indicating color is cyan, which means blue. Cyanosis is bluish color of the skin, which indicates a lack of oxygen. The suffix is attached to the end of a word. Suffixes frequently indicate the procedure, condition, disorder, or disease. An example of a suffix indicating a procedure is ectomy, which means excision or surgical removal. Mesectomy is the surgical removal of a breast. An example of a suffix indicating a disorder is itis for inflammation. Pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardium, which is a fluid sac surrounding the heart. Knowledge of medical terminology is required to understand the documentation you will be interpreting in codes. Often you will hear the terms anatomy and physiology used together. Anatomy refers to the structure of the body parts and their relationship to one another. Physiology refers to the function of the body and how the body parts work to carry out their life-sustaining activities. In this chapter, we will be discussing anatomy. The human body contains multiple organ systems. An organ is multiple tissue types formed together to perform a specific function for the body. An example of an organ would be the heart. An organ system is a collection of body parts that depend on one another to achieve a mutual objective. An example of an organ system is the cardiovascular system, where the heart and the blood vessels work together to carry blood and oxygen to all body cells. The organ systems make up the human body. In this chapter, we will discuss a brief overview of the organ systems. Each organ system is also discussed in subsequent chapters as it pertains to the chapter itself. Healthcare personnel use a standard form for body directions and orientations. The standard body position is considered the anatomical position. The anatomical position is an upright, face forward position with the arms by the side and the palms facing forward. The feet are parallel and slightly apart. This position is used when talking about directional terms in medical documentation. In this medical documentation, it states that the resection was from the superior portion, which is towards the head, down to the inferior portion, which is toward the feet. Understanding directional terms will help when interpreting medical record documentation.
The integumentary system consists of the skin, hair, and nails. There are only a few procedures pertaining to the hair, so we'll focus on the skin and nails. These structures work together to provide protection from injury, fluid loss, and outside elements such as bacteria and viruses. They also provide body temperature regulation, fluid balance, and sensation. There are two main layers that make up the human skin, the dermis and the epidermis. Below the dermis is the subcutaneous layer. The subcutaneous layer is just beneath the skin as, and is composed of fatty tissue. In ICD-10 PCS, there are two root operations which may be used to report a debridement, an excision, the cutting out or off without replacement of a portion of a body part, or extraction, pulling or stripping out or off all of a portion of a body part by the use of force. In order to properly code debridements in using ICD-10 PCS, the documentation must indicate if it's excisional or non-excisional, the depth, and the location of the area being treated. The nail is made up of six parts. The root is the part that extends into the skin. The nail bed is the area that the nail lays on. It extends from the lunula to the hyponychium. This is the pink part of your nail, which gets its color from blood vessels, nerves, and melanocytes. The nail plate is the actual nail made up of translucent keratin. The eponychium is the cuticle, the perionychium is the skin around the nail and is the site of hangnails, ingrowed nails, and infection of the skin around the nails called parenchyma. The hyponychium is the junction between the free edge of the nail and the skin. A term you'll want to be familiar with for nails is subungual. Subungual means under the nail. Evacuation of a subungual hematoma is coded with ICD-10 PCS code 0H9QX0Z. Drainage of fingernail with drainage device external approach. More about PCS coding in later chapters. The musculoskeletal system is made up primarily of muscles and bones. It includes the joints, tendons, and ligaments. The bones from the skeleton, which support the body, provides a mechanism for motion and protects vital organs. The bones also serve as a production factory for blood cells and store calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium salts. The muscles provide form and heat for the body. Bones can be classified according to their shape. Long bones are longer than they are wide and are found in the limbs such as the femur and the humerus. Examples of short bones include the carpal bones of the wrist and the tarsal bones of the ankle. Sesamoid bones are shaped like a sesame seed and can be found embedded in tendons or joints. There are two sesamoid bones in the ball of the foot beneath the big toe joint. The patella in the knee is the largest sesamoid bone. Flat bones have a layer of spongy bone between two thin layers of a compact bone. The cross section is flat, not rounded. The skull and ribs are examples of flat bones. Irregular bones are the bones that do not fit into the other categories of the bones. Vertebrae have their own shape and are considered irregular bones. Cartilage is a type of flexible connective tissue that is non-vascular, has no blood vessels. Cardial cartilage is a matrix made of chondrocytes, collagen, and cells called cardioglycans, depending on the type of cartilage. Joints and articulating surfaces are synonymous and provide a connection between two or more parts of the skeleton. Joints are classified according to the type of connective tissue and the articulating surfaces. The three types of joints are fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. Most joints are synovial. The human skeleton is divided into two parts, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton contains the skull, spine, ribs, sternum, and sacrum, and protects your vital organs. The appendicular skeleton is your extremities and the girdles that connect them. Muscles have the property of contractility. They also provide form and produce heat for the body. There are three types of muscles. Skeletal, also called striated, muscles move the skeleton. They are attached to the skeleton by tendons. Cardiac muscle is the heart muscle. It is an involuntary muscle that pumps blood throughout the body. Smooth muscle is found in the walls of hollow organs of the body, like the esophagus, to move food through, bladder to control urine, and even in your eyes. The cardiovascular system is made up of the heart and blood vessels. The heart pumps to move blood throughout the body through the pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. The heart is composed of three layers, the epicardium, which is your outer lining, the myocardium, which is the main heart muscle, and the endocardium, which is the inner lining. The muscles of the heart sit in a fluid-filled sac called the pericardial sac. 
a pericardial window described in ICD-10 PCS, drainage of pericardial cavity, open approach is an incision made into the pericardium to drain fluid that has built up around the heart. There are three types of blood vessels. The arteries take blood away from the heart, the veins take blood back to the heart, and then there's capillaries. Capillaries are tiny, semi-permeable vessels that facilitate this change of fluids, oxygen, and nutrients and waste between local tissues and the bloodstream. Coronary artery bypass grafts can be created using veins or arteries. Like the cardiovascular system, the lymphatic system includes a network of vessels that transports fluids the lymphatic system is important to our body's defense system and is resistance to disease. The lymph vessels and nodes collect excess fluid from the interstitial spaces and return it to the heart using several, <clears throat> a series of valves. Lymphoid organs include the spleen, thymus, tonsils, higher patches of the intestines. The respiratory system is also known as the pulmonary system. It includes the nose, nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, bronchi, and their smaller bronchioles, lungs, and alveoli. The respiratory system functions to swap carbon dioxide for oxygen. This gas exchange occurs through the permeable membranes of the alveoli. The digestive system is a feeding tube that begins in the mouth and ends at the anus. This structure winds its way through several body cavities. It encompasses a multitude of structures and organs that mechanically and chemically break down food for absorption into the bloodstream and use at the cellular level. The esophagus joins the stomach at the cardiac orifice. The fundus of the stomach is the rounded upper portion of the stomach. The body is the main portion and the pyloric antrum is the lower portion of the stomach. The small intestine is divided into three sections. The first third of the small intestine is the duodenum. The second one third is the jejunum and the distal one third is the ileum. There's also an ileum in the pelvis bone. To easily remember which ileum is in the small intestine, remember all three sections of the small intestines are spelled with an E. The large intestine begins just after, after the ileocecal valve and the cecum with the appendix attached at the bottom then the colon, rectum, and anal canal. There are four portions of the colon. The ascending colon proceeds from the ileocecal valve upward to the hepatic flexure, becomes the transverse colon, and then turns downward to become the descending colon at the splenic flexure. The descending colon gives way to the sigmoid colon and ends at the rectum. The internal and external anal sphincters at the terminus of the rectum control the flow of fecal matter, leaving the body. When coding for endoscopy, endoscopies of the large intestine, it's important to know the extent of the large intestine examined. The endoscopy begins at the rectum. For a proctosigmoidoscopy, the examination goes into the sigmoid colon. For a sigmoidoscopy, the examination goes through the sigmoid colon and possibly into the portion of the descending colon. For a full colonoscopy, the entire colon is examined. The urinary system is primarily responsible for the production of urine for the excretion of metabolic waste, along with fluid and electrolyte balance. Structures of the urinary system include the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and the urethra. A urinary calculi or stone can exist anywhere within the urinary system. The diagnostic and procedural coding are both dependent upon where, the, where in the urinary system the stone exists. The organs of the reproductive system differ greatly between male and female. However, their functions are similar. The male and female reproductive systems include external and internal genitalia. Because of the makeup of the male and female reproductive systems, the female is more likely to get urinary tract infections. The nervous system provides three general functions, sensory, integrative, and motor. The nervous system helps us feel, think, remember, move, and be aware of the world around us. It is divided into two groups, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system are the nerves that attach the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body. The cranial nerves stem from the brain and the spinal nerves stem from the spine. The nervous system functions as a central operator, as the central intelligence for the body. It detects changes outside and within the body, makes decisions based on the information received, and stimulates muscles or glands to respond. Organs of sense are classified as a subsection of the nervous system. The sensory organs receive and filter sensory input that is interpreted in the central nervous system. Organs of sense include the eye and the ear. The eye is the sense 
organ of sight. The eyeball is made up of three layers. The intermace layer is the retina. The middle layer is the choroid. And the outermost layer is the sclera. The eyeball is separated into an anterior segment filled with aqueous humor and posterior segment filled with vitreous humor. The crystalline lens separates the two segments. The aqueous humor is responsible for the intraocular pressure in the eye. The vitreous humor shares in the responsibility for the intraocular pressure, but also prevents the eyeball from collapsing. One of the most common procedures on the eye is actually on the muscles that control the eye movement instead of the eyeball itself. That is strabismus surgery, which is performed by shortening or lengthening various muscles of the eye. The ear plays a part in both the sense of hearing and the sense of equilibrium. The ear works in tandem with the auditory nerves to send auditory impulses to the temporal lobes of the cerebrum. These structures working together form the auditory apparatus. The ear has three distinct and separate anatomical divisions, the outer or external, the middle ear or the tympanic cavity, and the inner ear or the labyrinth. The auditory apparatus uses the ear to capture sound waves and transmits or conducts them into tiny hair cells in the organ or corti. Dendrites, also known as nerve endings of the sensory neurons for hearing are found in the bottom of those tiny hair cells. The auditory canal or eustachian tube connects each middle ear to the throat. This allows easy transfer of infections in the throat to move into the ear, causing a middle ear infection. Children who have repetitive ear infections at an early age will sometimes have these tubes placed in their ears. Otoology is the study of the ear. This is a very specialized field of medicine. There are two types of services, audiometry and surgical. Surgical services are often performed by an ENT physician and the codes for procedures are typically found in the medical section, section zero of the PCS code book. Audiometry services are studies to test and improve your hearing. These codes are in section F, physical rehab and diagnostic audiology of the PCS code book. Regulating the functions of the human body to maintain homeostasis is accomplished by the nervous system and endocrine system working together. They form a system of internal communication for the human body. The endocrine system includes cells, tissues, and organs called endocrine glands. Endocrine glands are ductless glands secreting their hormones directly into the bloodstream. The hemic or hematologic system involves the blood. Red cells or erythrocytes contain hemoglobin that enables the cells to pick up and deliver oxygen to all parts of the body. White cells or leukocytes are the body's primary defense against infection. Platelets or thrombocytes form clusters to plug small holes in blood vessels and assist in the clotting process. The immune system is called a separate system from the hematologic system. However, most immune cells originate in the hematologic system. Often the studies of allergies will go hand in hand because allergic response is actually an immune response. The immune system is made up of two types of cells, B cells and T cells. B cells are created and mature in the bone marrow. They get activated and produce antibodies that attach to the surface of the infectious agent. T cells identify infectious agents and directly attack them. Both T cells and B cells are lymphocytes. Other types of white blood cells used by the body for protection include neutrophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. Antigens elicit an immune response in the body. Antigens that enter the body from the environment include inhaled macromolecules, for example, proteins on cat hairs that can trigger an asthma attack, ingested macromolecules, such as selfish proteins that can trigger an allergic reaction or a peanut allergy, and molecules that are introduced beneath the skin, such as a splinter or an injected vaccine. Antibodies are immune system-related proteins called immunoglobulins. Some antibodies destroy antigens directly, others indirectly, by making it easier for white blood cells to destroy the antigen. As you have heard in this lecture, it is imperative for a coder to know and understand medical terminology in order to be able to read and understand what is written in medical documentation. It is also essential for a coder to know and understand anatomy as it relates to medical procedures and diagnoses. Again, this was an extremely high level overview of medical terminology and anatomy. And I highly suggest if you haven't already taken a course <clears throat> or lesson in a thorough review before starting this course completely, I would take a medical terminology, anatomy, and physiology class.